Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. In this episode, we're going to follow up on this Area 51 Site 4 game. If you were with us on the last video, you'll recall the gun was busted. It didn't work. We have another gun that does work, but doesn't have a clip on the end of it. The wire's hanging out. Tonight, we're going to remove the guns. I'll show you how to take them out properly. We're going to reattach the holster. Got to have something to put our gun in so it's not falling on the floor. And we're going to try to get this gun and fix it and make it work again. You know, I just can't stand having a two-person game that only one person can play. We need that second gun, even if it's just to fool around with. So, we'll get right into it. We're going to have to pop the control panel loose again. And then in the back here, the way these guns are supposed to be removed... You'll see we have bolts sticking through. Three bolts. Triangular plate on the outside usually. You just take those nuts off the end of the bolts and unplug your plug here on the board and your gun will come right out that big hole. You won't have any issue. You're not supposed to take the snap ring off. The snap ring right here was removed on the other gun. So it's hanging out the hole and not stuck in properly. So we're going to take care of that too. But we'll get into it here in a second. We're going to start with the easiest task first, and that's replacing the bolts on the holster to hold it down. This is the back side of the control panel. As you can see, we've got three holes. Our holster still has the three bolts. If you don't have three bolts, go to the local hardware store and grab you three bolts to go through it. Character bolts will work the best. We've gone through our nuts and bolts bin and found three washers and three nuts. It's a pretty simple process. We're going to put the control panel down, put the nuts through, and we're just going to open it back up and tighten those down. So, we'll get those tightened down, and I'll be right back with you. All right, as you see there, I started the three nuts. We're just going to snug them down a little bit. We don't want to over tighten them, but we don't want our holster flopping around. And you'll notice, I laid my guns in a tote on the floor, because one of the easiest ways to damage them is bouncing them off of a concrete floor or a wooden floor. Any kind of shock will break the sensors on the end of the boards inside. I'll show you those later in the video. So our holster is replaced and it's not going anywhere. So now we have something to hold our gun and keep it from falling on the ground. Next we'll get to the gun removal. Our first step in removing the guns is going to be to reach in through the control panel and gently remove the plug for each gun so that it's not attached. You don't want to be ripping wires out of plugs. Then we're going to come around to the back here. It's easier for me to reach in through the back and try to get to these bolts. They are rather long. Some of them are on fault. Some of them aren't. All right, that gun is basically removed. I'll show you how to pull it right out here in a second. Go over to the other side and remove the. It only has two nuts in it, but we'll fix that. Two bolts. get the nut out but I'm gonna take this other nut off while I'm away and we'll be right back with you around front all right we removed the last nut in there and now we'll come back around to the front the gun panel there with its three bolts should be able to easily remove it maybe wiggle it a little bit to get the bolts out the bolts are long they're through wood so you may have to pull them a little bit and that plate comes right off. 
out comes the plug. Don't take the snap ring off and remove the cable from the mounting plate unless you have to work on the cable. And you know, that's maybe understandable. Otherwise, just leave it in there. But our guns are removed. We'll get right back with you. Okay, I pulled the guns out. Got them here on my little workbench. As you can see on this one, it has what's known as a C-ring or a snap ring. You pop that off, which is what they unfortunately did on this other one here, and your cable comes out in case you need to work on it. Sometimes you have to replace these cables. They get damaged, kinked, whatever, cuts wires. So we don't have a 10 cent snap ring. You can bet that's gonna be on my list of stuff to get. I like to buy these packs at my favorite discount tool store, and uh, they have some with snap rings, I'm sure. But what we do have is some hose clamps and a washer that fits over the top of this. So, my temporary fix is to put that washer over that. And then to install a hose clamp to hold it all tight. So, let me set it all up here. It's not lined up. But let me line it up, set it up. We'll tighten that hose clamp down and we'll see if it holds. Okay. And as you can see, I put it all tight together. I put the washer on. I put the hose clamp on. And that sucker's tight. That plate's not moving. I mean, you can probably yank it off there. But if somebody's doing that to your games, they don't need to be playing your games. So, we'll get on to the next step. We're going to have to figure out what to do about this gun. Okay, we got the good one here. It works. We have this broken one. It don't work. It doesn't even have a trigger. So, we're going to have to improvise. We'll have to figure out what we can do. We don't know if the optic board in it works or not. But what we do know, do know is I don't throw anything away when it comes to these games. And I just so happen to have a new casing sitting back on the shelf. It looks to be the same casing. So we're going to... But I don't have a trigger still. I do not have a trigger and a trigger spring. Everything else is inside of this, this casing that's broken. We're going to have to... Get a trigger and a trigger spring. I don't want to wait. So, I'm going to try to make me a trigger out of a piece of old plexiglass. We'll see how that goes. We'll improvise a spring from our spring kit that we bought from our favorite discount hardware store. The tool store. And we'll try to end up with two guns like this that both work. So, we'll get some parts. We'll get started, and I'll take you with me. All right, we've got the guns here on the bench laying next to one another. We're going to take these guns apart. we got to take this busted one apart so we can get the good parts out of the inside and put them in our other casing. We're going to take apart this one that works and is perfectly fine so that we can make a, try to make a copy of the trigger along with improvising a spring that will return it to its position. Whether that'll work or not, I do not know. We shall see. But if you're going to work on arcade games in any capacity, the first thing I recommend you buying other than your tool, regular tool set is a set of security bits. You have to have these bits to take apart the screws on most games. Anything from the factory requires a security bit. I don't recommend buying them at my favorite tool store because they don't fit very well. I bought these from a reputable retailer online. I believe it was Arcade Shop. And they work perfect. But the way you take these guns apart is you get in every hole and take out every single screw. I don't know what kind of nonsense went on here, but it's kind of hard to do that to a gun just dropping it. 
I don't know if they tried to pry it apart because they didn't have security bits or what they were doing, but we'll take them apart properly and we'll get right into it. Also, while I was looking around in the parts room, I ran across something that might come in handy on this. It's covered up for good reason. Nobody needs to see that. It's If you know what it is, get away from them. It's the worst thing you could ever do to yourself. But I got away about 10 years ago. But we have an optic board here. This is what the optic board looks like inside of those guns. And as you can see, those little bitty legs, I'm trying to get it to where it contrasts on something better, those little bitty legs holding that on, that's what holds your optic lens. That's the optic lens there. That's what shoots your gunshot on the screen. So you don't want them getting bent or broken and keep having to repair them. There are many options. I always recommend putting chains or cables on the guns so they cannot reach the floor. If they can reach the floor and the floor is hard, you will be breaking guns. It's just the cables are rather stiff. Trash cue. Cables are rather stiff. You got them curled up on there. It's easy for them to flop out and the momentum just slams the tip of that gun on the ground. So you'd like to always have them cabled up. Or chained up so they can't do that okay we've loosened all the screws on the broken gun casing so now it should come apart broken pieces falling out and it's apart okay as you can see that's what is it inside of a gun. That's how it comes apart. We're going to save all of our nuts and bolts. This type of gun here on the light board, this particular one, has a holder to eliminate the cracking and breaking that I showed you on the other style that doesn't have a holder to keep it from bouncing and vibrating. So that's the broken one. As you can see, we're missing a trigger here. And some sort of spring to return it. We'll get the other one opened up. See what it looks like. Okay, we've taken out the screws. Loosened them all up. And we're ready to pop the casing off of the good gun. And as you can see here. We have this. Barrel type spring here. With an arm on each end. That's what returns our trigger back to position and that's what the trigger looks like I think we can make one I don't know, but we're gonna find out all right I just want to keep you up on how it's going here we've got the spring out we got the trigger out we're gonna use this piece of plexiglass to make us a new trigger the first thing I did was found a bolt that I can use as a piece of stock to make the shaft that goes crossways on the trigger and holds it that it swings on. So I had to get a bolt that fits comfortably inside of that hole right there and moves, gives it free room. It's just going to serve as a pin. We'll cut it off later. We took that pin and we got a drill bit roughly the same size. Well, pretty close actually. I use this piece of duct tape to keep it from splitting, cracking. I folded it over the edge of this plexiglass. I took the trigger and I pushed it down on top of the tape and I made an impression. I then pulled the trigger off. I drilled a hole to simulate where the pin would be. I then put the trigger back on the plexiglass and outlined it in black marker so that I can cut me out a trigger. My tool of choice on this. To cut that out is going to be my moto tool with a little cutting wheel on it, grinding wheel. 
seems to cut the plexiglass quite well. It mounds it up, but it doesn't crack it. It melts it. So we're going to try that out, see how it works, and we'll be right back with you. Okay, as you can see, we've got our piece of plastic in between two pieces of wood. We put it in our little vise here, and we're going to take our moto tool and rough it out. We're going to cut along here. We're going to cut a straight line along here. And then we'll trim this little piece out here. And we'll try to add a little groove curve for the finger there. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so we got our moto tool here. I'm going to turn it on and start grinding some plastic. Turn it up a little higher. See how it melts the plastic away as it cuts it? Let me go ahead and turn the camera off while I cut this other line across here, and then we'll shape it better. All right, we've cut the other side of the blank here that we're making, and just fold it and break it loose. Now, you're going to have some pieces on the side from where the plastic melted as it was cut, in, but we'll break those off and clean that up after we get it shaped a little bit better. So, let me reposition it, put it in the vise, turn it around so we can work it a little bit better, and we'll go on to the next step. All right, we've repositioned our blank here. We turned it over. So we can get to the line on the other side. Now we're going to cut along right along the front side of this black line. So when we turn the camera off, we'll grab it. Okay. We broke this loose. Cut this loose now. We just break it on out of there. Like I said, we've got some rough edges. We'll clean that up here in a little bit. Now we can take it out, turn it around, and start working on where your finger goes. Okay, so as most of you know, these little rotary tools, no matter what brand you have, you can get various accessories for the tips. Now we switched over to a different kind of tip. <clears throat> and what we're going to do here is we're going to try to flatten out this edge and give it a little curve, a little contour where your finger pulls it. And we're going to try to clean up this along here a little bit and flatten it out. As you can see, it's just getting down a little bit more right there to give you a little contour for your finger. But I'm going to put the camera down so that I can hold this and get a little better shape to it. I'll show you the results. Okay, so we've ground it down some, curved it, contoured it. We're getting close. We're still a little bit off, so we're going to move a little bit more out of there. And we'll check it again. Okay, so we're back. We've got it even closer. As you can see, we're pretty darn close on the contour on the front and the shape. Trim the back. I left it a little bit thick on that back side. It's got plenty of room. If not, we'll have to trim it down again later. But as you can see from this side, it's, it's trimmed pretty close. I mean, it's a homemade trigger, but hey, we're going to see how it works. Our next step is our pin that we pulled out earlier we don't have that little axle sticking through for it to swing on so we're gonna cut this down and make one we'll be right back we need to know how long to cut our little shaft so it just so happens that when you hold it up next to the original trigger right at the end of the rust that's how long it needs to be. So we're going to switch our blade back to our little cutting wheel, grinding wheel, and we're going to cut that off and see how it works. Getting right on through. Okay, we have our trigger. 
We have our little metal pin. And we're going to put some hot glue on it. Place it about halfway through there so it sits in the center. And that way we can put it back in the casing and see if we can't get us a gun working. Let me glue it and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've replicated us a trigger. Much like the original. We added a little shaft in the middle. It's kind of crooked. We'll worry about that later if it gives us an issue. We glued it in there so that it's about halfway through on each side. Next issue, we need a spring. I don't have a spring like that. Can you even order that? I don't, even ever... <laughs> I don't know, but mine doesn't have a spring. So, here we go. Our handy dandy little spring kit from our favorite Herbert Freight store. I don't have one like that. I mean, I've got stuff like this. So what do we do? You know, when life gives you women's, the only thing I can think of is you squish them, you squeeze them, you bend them, and you make lemonade with them. Now, this is not a factory spring, but just like our trigger, we made us a replica. I mean, it's pretty close. I stuck it in the casing with the trigger, and it activates the switch and returns to position. So far, so good, guys. So let's start getting some stuff put back together so we can test this second gun and see if the light board in it works or if we're going to have to mess with it. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, well, we've reassembled our working gun. And we used our improvised parts to put together our second gun. Which, it's not brand new, but hey, it's not bad. We had to improvise with the, we didn't have nuts for this side. They were built into the other body, so we broke them out of the casing and used the inserts to hold it together. And if you listen, you can hear it clicking, shooting it every time it's triggering the switch. And notice it is returning to position with our improvised homemade spring and trigger. So we'll get it all hooked up and we're going to go do the reverse of the removal and reinstall them. And we'll see what happens. Okay, as you can see, we've got our guns reinstalled. Everything's hooked back up. Just in this new holster there. Let's plug her up and see what we got. We got power. Okay, the game's loading. Press start. All right, let's try out our fancy new gun, see if it works. Uh-oh. It looks like it works, guys. Check it out. So, we didn't have to wait a week. We didn't have to spend any money. Except put our, was it a hose clamp? Hardly anything little time, little ingenuity. You can figure it out. Get you a game. Get to playing. I appreciate you tuning in. You can join us for our next video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Click that little bell so you get a notification whenever I post a new video. And we hope to see you soon on the next game. Have a good night.